Welcome to the March 2021 Plan With Me monthly business planning and goal setting session. See how I plan my businesses every month. You can plan with me by planning the success of your own business and setting your own goals at exactly the same time as I am speaking. Every month I take some time to plan the success of my business and Every month I take some time to plan the success of my business the following month. Planning is my secret weapon when it comes to rapidly growing my business each month. Here's what I always say about planning. When you plan successful actions, you action your plan and become successful. Here's another one. The more detailed your plan, the more committed you feel. The more committed you feel, the more you will achieve. So I would like to encourage you to take some time to go through my planning process with me right now and make success a priority in your business. Today, you will plan the success of your business next month. You will create a success action plan that is exactly right for you. You will set monthly goals that you will actually achieve. Let me know if you planned along with me by leaving a comment on my blog, on my YouTube channel, or send me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. I would love to know how you felt after completing this process. My name is Kath Kyle and I'm the author of Stamp Goals book and I'm so happy that you're here. I help content creators and change makers manifest business success through spirituality, self-belief and strategy. I help you master your marketing, manifestation and money mindset. I call my planning process my monthly stamp planning process because my goal setting framework is called STAMP. It stands for Specific, Transformational, Actionable, Manageable and purpose-led and this planning process is something that I share in detail in my book called Stamp Goals. You can get my complete monthly stamp planning checklist and workbook as part of the book bonus bundle when you buy a copy of Stamp Goals book. But don't worry if you don't have my book yet, you'll still be able to use the following process that I'm about to share to plan your own business with me right now. So as an overview, there are 10 sections to my monthly stamp planning process. So here is a quick overview of all 10 steps before I walk you through each step in detail. Number one, ask questions. Number two, set gratitude goals. Number three, set giving goals. Number four, set growing goals. Number five, write new brain stamps. Number six, plan promotions and launches. Number seven, write a stamp statement. Number eight, create a stamp plan. Number nine, perform monthly manifestation rituals. And number 10, create new future overviews. Now I'm going to walk you through each point in detail and share my own plans that I have created next month as an example so you can see how it's done. This monthly stamp planning process should be done at least one month in advance. What I do myself is I allocate the last working day of every month to planning my business for the following month. And that way I always go into a new month feeling organized, totally in control, full of clarity and confidence because I know exactly what I'm focusing on for the entire month. So let's get started with step number one, which is to ask questions. So we start the planning process by tapping into our future self and ask questions about how the next month should play out in an ideal world. This is just a brief summary to engage your superconscious brain, otherwise known as thoughts that come from God or the universe, to provide you help with the planning process. So what you're going to do first of all is write some streams of consciousness answering the following questions about next month. What does your future self do? What did you create? What did you promote? And how much did you make? So you might want to pause this recording and answer these questions. So first question, 
what does your future self do pause the recording and answer that question next question what did you create pause and answer the next question what did you promote pause and answer the next question and how much did you make and this is just like a stream of consciousness so it's just whatever flows into your mind and this is what I wrote in answer to these four questions that I just rolled into a very quick summary of what I wanted the next month to look like. March was a fantastic month. I was on fire with my productivity and my confidence was sky high. I managed to create half of my brand new course focusing on manifestation for business. I was so full of gratitude for all of the sales that were pouring in for Dream Business Blueprint and I more than achieved my revenue goals for this month, which is amazing. So that's it. That's just a very quick overview to engage your planning brain in this process. So now we're going to get started with the first step, which is to set gratitude goals. So here is where we set our gratitude goals, which are revenue and income goals, things that we can't control, but that we get to be grateful for. So what you need to do is decide how much money you want your business to make next month. Now that you've decided how much money you want your business to make next month, what you're going to do is create a range of three amounts of revenue that you would be happy with in a range. And I call these FAB goals, F-A-B. For example, say you want to make $10,000 in revenue next month, but you'd still feel over the moon if you achieved $8,000 in revenue. What you do is you attach a word to three different levels of income. So for example, F stands for fantastic and $8,000 would be your fantastic goal. A stands for amazing and $9,000 would be your amazing goal. So you go one step closer to your original goal each time. And then finally, B stands for brilliant and $10,000 would be your brilliant goal. So that's what you'd ultimately love to have, but anything within the range of $8,000 to $10,000 would be fabulous. That way, if you achieve close to your goal of $10,000, but you don't quite hit it, you still feel like a winner. Now, I personally don't share my exact revenue goals before I achieve them because as you can imagine, that would put a lot of negative pressure on me, which would impact negatively on my state of mind, making it less likely for me to achieve my goals. I don't mind sharing my long term goals with you, but my short term monthly goals I'm not going to share. I suggest that you keep your revenue goals a secret because you don't have direct control over them and your manifestation mindset is very delicate and needs to be kept in a positive place at all time. And I do think it's a good idea to share the other types of goals with other people, such as the gratitude and the growing goals, because it holds you accountable for your own actions, which you do have direct control over. And I will get to those in a minute and share my own goals with you. So now you've set your revenue goals, your gratitude goals, you need to now decide how much of that revenue you would like to keep as profit. So my answer was this month, I have set 66% as my profit goal because I know what my expenses are likely to be. So this is a realistic figure for me. Now what you're going to do that you've decided how much revenue you want to make and how much profit you want to make, you are going to allocate your business money. Now money likes to be put to good use. So what we need to do now is to give our revenue a purpose. What will you do with the money that you receive as revenue into your business? I personally like to use my grow six business rule to allocate business revenue. And how this works is you figure out how much revenue you've made in total and also add up your expenses for the month. One of my expenses is to pay myself a personal salary. And this is a fixed amount that I always take every month. And then you calculate how much you've got left by taking your expenses away from your revenue. With this excess money, you need to decide what to do with it. 
I use the following percentage allocations for my own excess revenue and you could call this excess revenue profit but seeing as I am spending some of it on even more business expenses it's not strictly profit in terms of accountancy so that's why I haven't called it profit so here is the grow six business rule the first principle is wealth I use 50% of this excess revenue to pay myself personally so on top of the salary that I've already paid myself everything that's left over half of it goes straight towards me and I will use the most efficient way possible to get that money into my personal bank account from my business then the next principle is team I use 10% of the excess revenue to go towards building my team or hiring new subcontractors. The third principle is brand. I put 10% towards testing paid ads until I find an ad that is profitable and then I scale this up. I don't necessarily keep this at 10% but I do when I'm just testing ads. The fourth principle is environment. I put 10% towards equipment and new tools and a lot of these are online tools the fifth principle is yourself I put 10% towards training myself as the CEO of my own business I love to constantly buy new training courses and books so I can learn great lessons from other successful people who have gone before me and the sixth and final principle of the grow six business rule is cash I save 10% in a business bank account that starts off as an emergency fund and then becomes an investment fund. So now that you've decided how much business revenue you need to make, we need to look at the other types of monetary goals that is important to set. So you need to now decide how much income did you make personally this month. Now I want to take this opportunity to point out that this it is good to remember that your personal income needs to be separate from what the business makes because you don't get to personally keep everything that the business makes and the business is not your only source of income. So even if you don't expect your business to be bringing in a full-time salary for you just yet, you can still set a personal income goal that you're happy with because money can come from a variety of sources. So how much personal income would you like to make next month? Now we go through a similar process of allocating our personal income so we always know exactly what we're doing with our money. And this is what I personally do with my income. I make sure that my expenses are always lower than my income. This is in my household. And I take off my personal expenses from my income and whatever's left I allocate to different places and I use my 40% income allocation rule to allocate whatever is left over. So here's the 40% income allocation rule that I use to allocate my personal, my household income that comes into my personal bank account. So a minimum of 10% goes towards investment and often for me a lot more than 10% but it's a minimum of 10%. 10% goes towards charity, 10% goes towards saving for future fun such as vacations, 10% goes towards fun for now and I call this my personal budget and I spend this on whatever I want straight away if I choose to and this helps me to never feel guilty about spending money because I always feel like I can buy whatever I like with my personal budget. And then 60% is left over and that goes towards whatever you choose. So right now I'm investing a lot of this into stocks and shares. So now we have set our gratitude goals for our business and also personally. Now we're going to move on to number three which is set giving goals. So now we're going to move on to setting giving goals. Giving goals are focused on what you're going to offer in return for money. So what are you going to create or what are you going to offer your customers next month? What do you want to create next month? How can you help your customers in the best way? Who are you creating this for? My own giving goal is to create 
half of a signature course that helps business owners manifest business success. And I'm creating half of it because I'm going to create half this month, the half the next month and half the following month after that. It's also good at this stage to brainstorm some names for some new products right now too. And if you've already created all of the offers that you want in your business right now, a good giving goal to set would be to improve the products or services that you already offer or try and get some feedback and learn how you could take your offer to the next level. Now we're going to move on to number four, which is set growing goals. Now let's set our growing goals. Growing goals are focused on how we feel and think about ourselves and our businesses. So you should set growing goals that focus on removing beliefs that are keeping you stuck or stepping into a more successful version of yourself. And I'm going to walk you through this process and share my own answers to each question with you now. So what is holding you back from success? Why don't you have what it takes to succeed? So when I answered this question myself, this was my answer. I have had a fear of my revenue decreasing to a level that is lower than my expenses. So that is what I felt was holding me back when I ran through this planning process. So what are the effects of thinking this way? So for me personally, the effects of thinking this way and staying in fear is that my business stays smaller and doesn't grow as big as I want it to. Are there any advantages of thinking this way? Here's my answer. The advantages of my business not growing big is that it won't feel as overwhelming. I won't feel so much pressure to have to be consistent with my business if my business stays at the current level. The smaller my business stays, the lower my expenses and the less pressure I feel. So as you can see, there are clearly advantages of thinking something that you don't want to think. And I hope this is highlighting to you how to really unpack why you keep thinking these negative thoughts, because some of them there are actually advantages to. Now we're going to look at the disadvantages. What are the disadvantages of this way of thinking? The disadvantages of staying at my current level is that I don't feel like I'm growing or achieving anything. I don't get to reach or help more people and I don't get to increase my revenue. Next question. Is this disbelief true? What proof do you have? Here's my answer. My disbelief is not true. During the 10 years that I have been in business, my business has always been in profit. There have been a few months where my expenses have been greater than my revenue, but this has always balanced out in other months. There has never been a time when I wasn't able to pay my salary. So the next step is to let go of your disbelief. Can you release your disbelief now? What I like to do to release my disbelief is to stamp out my disbelief by writing it down on a piece of paper and putting it in my stamp box, which is a box created specifically for this purpose. So it's just a box that I put my little piece of paper in and I feel the feelings of letting go of the disbelief as the paper goes into the box. Next question, how did you feel as you rejected your disbelief and overcame your fears? My answer, I feel free, relieved and excited. Here's the next question. How did you act next month to achieve this success? My answer is, I look forward to the first of every month so I can feel grateful for all of the services provided to me and I can do my monthly manifestation review. I also kept a closer eye on my daily revenue so I can put my mind at rest on a daily basis. I release all spending with joy and expectation. Here's the next question. What did you think, believe and feel next month? So these are statements. I like to call these brain stamps and we're going to use these in a minute. So what, here's what we do is we replace that disbelief that we currently 
felt and or that we've just let go of and we replace it with new statements which are the opposite of the disbelief so here are the feelings or the thoughts that i want to be thinking the thoughts that i want to be believing next month which are the opposite of my disbelief i am always fully supported and guided i always have more than enough money for all of my needs everything is happening in my favor so what growing goals are you focusing on next month so you just need to name your disbelief your struggle or your fear and the name of my growing goal is releasing financial fear so now we've finished writing down our growing goals we're going to move on to the next section number five which is to write new brain stamps so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our brain stamps that we've already written as part of the overcoming your challenges and we're going to program them into our phones so that they pop up throughout the day as reminders or if you don't want to do that you can write them on post-it notes and stick them in prominent places where you're going to see them often and this helps you keep these positive beliefs at the forefront of your mind and reprogram your subconscious mind so just to remind you my brain stamps for next month are I am always fully supported and guided I always have more than enough money for all of my needs and everything is happening in my favor so now that we've done brain stamps we're going to move on to number six plan promotions and launches so now you're going to plan how you're going to make money next month and this is very important there's no point in setting gratitude goals about how much money you're going to make if you don't take action towards making money by actually offering something for sale so what are you going to offer for sale next month even if you don't have a product to sell yet you can always offer your expertise and knowledge in the form of coaching or consulting so there is always a way to make money here's my answer next month i am promoting dream business blueprint also bear in mind when i say this that i did this particular planning session at the end of january as i create my content one month in advance so although you are planning march in february I am using examples of planning February in January. So you'll actually be seeing me making promotions for Dream Business Blueprint this month because that is what I planned for when I did this planning session back in January. So what are you going to offer for sale? Second question, what was your offer priced at? So choose a price that fits your current confidence levels how confident are you that you can get results if you're not confident at all because you've never sold your offer before your price point should be zero you need to start by finding beta testers who can use your offer and give you some testimonials i have decided the price of my own offer for dream business blueprint but i'm not going to share that here because i am constantly raising my prices and at the end of every promotion my offer becomes unavailable and my prices are raised significantly for the next launch so the next time you see dream business blueprint for sale the prices will be much higher and i also started my pricing for my signature course at zero and got some testimonials from beta testers before i started my introductory pricing i have gradually raised my pricing since then and i do this with all of my brand new products and when you get results for your customers it will give you the confidence to price your offer accordingly you can ask your beta testers what they would expect your program to be priced at and use that as a guide next question who did you sell your offer to here's my answer i am selling my offer to entrepreneurs and those people looking to start a business who are open-minded and in agreement that mindset is the key to business success next question where are these people hanging out wherever they, these people hang out is the marketing channels that you're going to focus on marketing channels are places like youtube google search paid Facebook ads, Instagram, and I highly recommend one of these should always be your email list as people are much more likely to read your emails than your social media posts. 
You can start by focusing on the marketing channels that you love the best. If you love it, you're much more likely to use it and engage in them. I focus a lot of my attention right now on my blog, podcast and email list. These are my favorite marketing channels right now and I'm putting my attention here in the main. I am also sharing my content on all of the marketing channels where my audience is hanging out. Next question, how often did you promote your offer and to which marketing channels? Here's my answer. I usually do a monthly launch for the product that I'm promoting, but I also do share free content and opt-in freebies that lead to my offer all month long. Here's the next question. How many of your offers are you expecting to sell next month? As this is a figure that I have no control over, similar to my gratitude revenue goal, this is a goal that I keep to myself for energetic reasons. Now what you're going to do is set the dates of your promotion next month and put them in your calendar. And I use Asana for my project management system. So I add the dates in there. Let's move on to section number seven, which is to write a stamp statement. So now you're going to write a stamp statement. And this is an intention statement that you read every day to keep yourself on track with your goals. And I go into this in great detail, showing you exactly how to do this in my stamp goals book. But I will give you a couple of pointers here to get you started with a very brief stamp statement. So what you need to do to write a stamp statement is you're going to write down how much money you expect to make, what you intend to create and how you intend to feel next month in an intention statement. And what you're going to do is read this out loud every day to help you to reprogram your subconscious mind to achieve your goals. And I share my own examples of this in my book and give you a template in my stamp workbook that is one of the book bonuses. And to get that, you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash stamp goals. Or you can click the link surrounded this content and that will also take you there. So let's move on to section number eight, create a stamp plan. This is where you actually focus on achieving what you intended to achieve. You're going to make a specific plan for taking all actions necessary to achieve your goals. So the first thing you're going to do is schedule your fun. And if you know anything about me, the most important thing that matters to me is having a balanced life and something to look forward to, like a celebration. So the first thing you're going to do is schedule daily and other regular fun activities for next month in your calendar. And the reason for this is because it helps you to feel abundant and relaxed because we're in the business of hustling less and manifesting more. And we do that from a place of having the exact lifestyle that we want. We schedule our fun first to send a powerful signal to ourselves that we are important and our happiness matters more than anything else. We are worthy of anything we set our minds to. So what I like to do is plan a daily walk or a run by myself and also some time to read my books. This gives me something to look forward to. What I like to do is plan a daily walk or a run by myself and some time to read my books. And this gives me something to look forward to. I always plan a walk with my family at the weekend and when we're able to, we schedule a fun day trip with extended family somewhere outdoors and scenic and beautiful. So now we are going to schedule your accountability. So the next thing you're going to do is to hold yourself accountable for your actions by scheduling an accountability session with an accountability partner coach or mastermind group. And I also help to connect accountability partners for all customers of my stamp goals book in my customers only membership area. And all of my own accountability sessions are already in the calendar on a recurring basis. So I don't even have to think about this anymore. Next, you're going to move on to scheduling success rituals for your 3G goals 
your gratitude, your giving and your growing goals. So success rituals are groups of tasks that you perform repeatedly. Examples of some of my own success rituals are my morning routine, my evening routine, writing blog posts, recording a podcast, shooting a video, writing emails to my list, writing social media posts, writing sales pages, creating workshops and webinars, monthly stamp planning sessions, which is what we're doing right now. This is one of my success rituals because I do it every month on a regular basis. My monthly stamp reflection sessions, which I also do at on the first of every month to reflect on the previous month. My business finance reporting day, which I also do on the first of the month where I tot up how much I have made in the previous month and look at all my stats. And also creating courses is something that is a success ritual that I perform numerous times because I create lots of courses. I do all of these tasks at least once a month and many of them I do on a daily basis. I have systems, lists and routines for all of them so I know exactly what I'm doing and it becomes a success habit for me. So what success rituals will you carry out next month? Now we're going to brainstorm tons tasks. So now we're going to create new tons tasks for your 3G goals. So tons stands for today's one next step and it means focusing on one task at a time until an entire project is done or tons tasks could also be just one off tasks. Tons tasks are not usually repeated tasks as repeating tasks form part of success rituals. So now that I have my business up and running, I don't have as many tons tasks as I used to when I was first starting this business. But examples of tons tasks might include creating your about me page on your website, setting up social media accounts, learning how to new, use new software such as video editing, creating a welcome series for your email list. Some of my own tons tasks for next month are learning how to run Amazon ads to promote my book, finding out new ways to promote my book, stamp goals, updating my autoresponder on one of my other businesses. Now what we're going to do is create a time stamp by adding your stamp six to your calendar or your project management system for next month. So what on earth am I talking about? I know I've just used a lot of jargon. So let me explain some of the terminology that I'm using. So a time stamp means to add success rituals and tons tasks to a particular time slot in your week. Stamp six means there are six essential tasks that you need to focus on during any time period. And these are number one, gratitude goals, success rituals. Number two, gratitude goals, tons tasks. Number three, giving goals, success rituals. Number four, giving goals, tons tasks. Number five, growing goals, success rituals. And number six, growing goals, tons tasks. So I know that's a bit of a mouthful and you've probably not remembered any of that. So let me give you some examples of what these might be. So gratitude goals, success rituals. So these are tasks that help you to do marketing and sales activities so that you can bring in money that you can feel grateful for. So examples of marketing and sales tasks that you do over and over again are writing blog posts, that's a marketing task. Writing a sales page is a sales activity. So now here are some examples of gratitude goals, tons, tasks. So marketing and sales tasks that you might just do once. Learning how to improve your results with Facebook ads. Maybe setting up a split test with your sales page. Giving goals, success rituals. Here are some examples of giving goals that you would do repeatedly, anything to do with creating something for sale. So you could create a new course every single month. You could have a coaching call with a client a few times a week. 
you could respond to customers in your membership community. They're all examples of repeated tasks that are involved with creating an offer or delivering your offer. Now let's look at some examples of giving goals tons tasks. So the kind of tasks that you would do on a one-off basis to achieve your giving goals. So for example, we could be moving to a new course provider. You could be updating one of the lessons in your course. And here are some examples of growing goals, success rituals, your morning routine and your evening routine. And here are some examples of growing goals, tons tasks, and this will be completely individual, but say for example, you ha had a fear of public speaking, you could do a Facebook live to overcome your fears. You could invest in a new course and go through it. So these are your stamp six and you need to schedule them on a regular basis. A lot of these will be done every day by either you or by a member of your team. So growing goals can only be carried out by you, but you can delegate a lot of your gratitude and giving goals tasks to other people if you want to. So don't feel overwhelmed that you have to do everything yourself. Now let's move on to step number nine, which is to perform monthly manifestation rituals. And this is my most fun part of the planning section because I just adore all of the magic that comes with manifestation. So now you are going to perform your favorite manifestation ritual to bring success to you next month. And you can also use this time to plan a new manifestation ritual that you will start using during your morning or evening routine. I do a lot of manifestation rituals and a lot of them take place during my morning or evening routines. But things that I do during this time are starting a new abundance evidence log to log down all of the money I'm manifesting on a daily basis. Writing a new manifestation list of all of the things I want to manifest the next month. Script the next month writing down exactly how I want it to turn out. And scripting is a manifestation technique that I have covered in previous content. So go back and check that out if you're new to scripting. It's so powerful. Number 10, create new future overviews. So now what we're going to do is plan an overview of our perfect day, week, month and year. And this may take longer the first time you do it, but you don't need to keep redoing this every month. You might just want to make a couple of tweaks on a monthly basis. Now what you're going to do is create an outline of how you will use your time each day, week, month and year. And now you will use these perfect time outlines to create an actual overview of your next week and month. And as part of my book bonus bundle, I give you the perfect time outlines to help you plan your ideal week, month and year. Then you use the stamp overviews to plan your week, month and year. And I share all of my timestamps and perfect day outlines as examples in my book, but this is constantly changing depending on whether the kids are in or out of school due to lockdown. It has been a crazy last 12 months. So generally I stick to the following perfect day outline if I can. At six o'clock between six and seven, I do my morning routine. Between seven and nine, I do um, get the kids up, do all the kids stuff and do some household chores. Then between nine and 10, I do my daily walk or run or a workout. And between 10 and 11, I do some household tasks or some admin. Between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., this is when I do the bulk of my work on my business. Then between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., I pick up the kids and um, help them with any homework, do household tasks. Between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m., I do some catch up or some kitchen prep. And between 5 to 6.30 p.m., I make and eat dinner. And then between 6.30 to 8 p.m., we do household tasks, kids clubs, etc. Between 8 and 9 p.m., I do some reading. And between 9 and 10 p.m., I wind down and do my evening routine. 
So now here is the next question. What are you committing to next month? If you don't commit to anything, you won't be able to grow. So committing to your business is absolutely essential. This gives you the mindset of success. So here is what I'm committing to. Sharing two pieces of long form content each week in three different formats. I share one new blog post, one new video and one new podcast every Monday and every Friday each week. I am also committing to creating two months worth of content in one month because I am moving house the following month and this is what I need to do to keep my commitment. We have now planned our entire month. Congratulations. If you actually worked through this at the same time as me, hopefully you'll be feeling very organized, clear and confident about how you are going to achieve your goals next month. And if you would like a numbered checklist and a workbook with all of these monthly planning tasks to make it easier for you to work through them, you can get that free as part of my book bonus bundle that I give away to all customers of my stamp book. And you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash stamp goals, or you can go to kathkyle.com and then click on products and you can find it that way as well. Or just search for stamp goals book by Kath Kyle on Amazon. And the price of the book right now is so low compared to the massive value that you get. I honestly believe that this is like a thousand dollar course all wrapped up in the package of a book. So I urge you to go and grab my book before I raise the prices and this free bundle that won't be available forever. At the moment, I'm massively incentivizing buying my book, but in the future, I will take a lot of these bonuses out of the book bonus bundle and sell them separately. So this is your chance to get this super offer for a tiny investment. So now that you have planned your next month's success, you might be wondering how to plan the success of your entire business. And I have created a free workshop to help you do just this called how to plan your dream six figure business in 30 days. And in this workshop, I show you how to plan your dream six figure business in 30 days that fits your personality, desires and ideal lifestyle and make money from a brand new business, even if you have no experience or product to sell. And this workshop is valued at $77 and is part of my dream business blueprint course. And I am giving you free access to this workshop and an associated workbook for a limited time. You can click the link surrounding this content piece to get free immediate access and there's no opt-in required. Or you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash blueprint. And next time, in my next piece of content, I am sharing my own monthly manifestation results. So make sure you subscribe to my podcast, Manifest Business Success, my YouTube channel, Kath Kyle, and follow me on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle so you don't miss that. I will let you know via email when my next piece of content has arrived and I am currently giving away four brand new gifts every month to my email subscribers so don't miss that. You can subscribe to my list by opting into any of my free gifts such as my free 100 plus success mantras. Mantras are like affirmations that the brain can't argue with because they are true for everyone. These mantras will make the achievement of your goals inevitable. Here is an example of a couple of my own success mantras. Good things come to those who believe. Don't put all of your eggs in someone else's basket. Make your own basket. So you can get your free success mantras by going to kathkyle.com forward slash mantras or you can click the link surrounding this content. Now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.